Hey guys, Proper English here, and today we're going to take a look at a device called a Glowstone Carry Line. This thing is pretty cool. I've used it in a couple of designs. It's gone into a comparator and a twos complement converter. We're going to take a look at the twos complement converter in a little bit, but first let's take a look at what this thing does. All right, so what happens when I turn on this lever is we turn on all of the bits in one direction, but nothing in the other direction, and we can actually flip this around and the circuit works just fine the other way too. We turn on all of the bits over here and none of the bits over here. And this relies on glowstone being a zero tick diode. So the signal can go this way, but because signal can't travel down glowstone, well, it can't go back this way. And the reason I've set this up with these two lines here is to keep it too wide so that a signal can go for eight bits without needing a repeater. Now, this thing's particularly useful when we're carrying from only one point. So that's the situation we'll be dealing with in a two's complement converter. And what happens is we use the absence of a signal as a carry. So if we're carrying for one bit, we turn this guy off. All right, another bit. Now we're carrying for two bits. There's three and so on. So we can't carry from within the glowstone carry line because this signal overrides it. But as long as we only need to carry from one point, we're good to go. So let's take a look at this twos complement converter. All right, so before we get into this twos complement converter, let's remember what twos complement is. So twos complement is a way of representing negative binary numbers. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to take two steps. We're going to invert and we're going to add one. That's how we take the twos complement of a number. So we've got a three over here. It's zero, one, one. First thing we do is we invert it. So one, zero, zero. The zeros become ones. The ones become zeros. Then we add one. So it ends up being one, zero, one. And so we're going to use this example to test out our twos complement converter. All right, so a twos complement converter is useful for a number of things, but one of the major uses that you'll come across is when you want to display a, looks like we've got a ghost over there. Ooh, creepy. Well, so when you want to display a negative binary number, there's our ghost. Look, there he is. I'm gonna see if I can smack him. Guess he moved. Anyway, when you want to display a negative binary number, well, you can convert that to a positive binary number and run that through the same decoder that you would be running a positive binary number through and then have an extra negative symbol coming through saying this was a negative number and we're going to display a negative sign. So hopefully there aren't any more ghosts hanging around and we can get going with a demonstration. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on our first two bits over here. And right now, we're getting an output of three because we've set this so that it doesn't do the conversion. But if I come down here and I turn the converter on, what happens is we get our two's complement conversion and suddenly we've got a negative three. See, we've got all of these ones over here and then we've got a zero, one, that's a negative three. Now remember, we can add as many ones as we want to this end, it's still a negative three, okay? That's called sign extension. Now, let's turn this off, and we'll change our input so our input is negative. So we'll turn this guy off, and we'll do negative three in here, going in as our input. There we go. And so right now, we're getting an output of negative three because the converter is off. If I come down here and I turn it on, fly back up and suddenly we have a three. We're doing our twos complement conversion. Works perfectly. And now let's see how it works. All right, so there are a few things to take a look at here. We've got our glowstone carry line going up top and then we've got two XOR gates, one on the output over here that controls the conversion itself, one down here that controls whether or not the conversion occurs. Okay, so when our converter is off, we're sending a signal into all of the bottom XORs. All right, so that turns all of them off. But we're also sending a signal up here through our carry line, and 
going into all of the XORs up top. All right, so right now, this is off. The output XOR is off because we're getting a signal from the bottom and from the top. And so when I turn on any of these bits, what's happening is we're turning XORs down here off, okay? So I just entered a five, and we can see that the output over here is off, and the output over here is off, so the only signal those bits have going in is up top from the carry line, we get our output of one, zero, one. All right, so the conversion is a little bit trickier, but we'll take it step by step and it won't be too bad. We'll start by turning this thing on. And what that's doing is it's turning a bunch of the control off. So we've got the control input for these bottom XORs off, and we've got the control input for this carry line off. And so now we're outputting zeros up here, we're outputting zeros down here, and then we're outputting a bunch of zeros over here. And that's correct because our input is a zero. But we're going to take the add one part out of the equation and take a look at the inversion first. So we'll do that by turning the carry control back on. And so now if we take a look at our input, it's a bunch of zeros. The output is a bunch of ones, that's correct. But now what happens if I come over here and I turn the four bit on? Well now we're sending an input to this XOR down here, the control is off, so the output from this XOR is a one. And what's happening is now we're getting an input on top of the XOR, we're getting an input on the bottom of this XOR, so the output is off and that is our inversion. The next step is adding one. All right, so when I add one to this, what's going to happen is we're going to carry from here all the way over to here. And so we get a one, zero, zero, which is just what we've got right here, except inverted. And what's actually going on right now is we're taking a one, zero, zero, and the carry control is inverting it. So if I turn the carry control off, you can see that these three bits are no longer getting an input from the carry line, okay? And so what's coming through down here, this one, zero, zero, comes out at our output without being inverted. And so how are we still inverting everything else? Well, our input from bit two turns on the carry line from bit three all the way down to our end. And so what that's doing is it's saying, okay, well, when we have a one, one, zero over here, we're going to carry over to this one, but this bit can't carry, so all of these bits over here are going to stay as they are. And so when I turn this guy off, there we go. And that is how this two's complement converter works. All right, so we covered a couple of things today. We got into a glowstone carry line and some of its uses and took a look at a two's complement converter that used the glowstone carry line. This thing is pretty cool. I've used it, like I said, in a couple of creations. I'm sure that I'm going to use it in the future. Hopefully you guys can find some uses too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.